Pastor Mitch Watney of Good Samaritan Lutheran Church in Lexington Park, Maryland, uh, of the Metropolitan D.C. Synod of the ELCA. And I'm here today with uh, Pastor Michael Barber of Dominion Apostolic Ministries, uh, a local predominantly African-American congregation here in the Lexington Park area. And we're here to share a little bit about an event, uh, actually a, a series of events that happened <laughs> in our lives uh, starting some three years ago. And we just want to share this story with you because it's filled with God's blessings. Um, Pastor, I, I, I remember it was late July or early August, and I remember that our mutual friend, Aloysius, uh, wanted us to meet. He'd been chomping at the bit to introduce us, and he was telling me about your power hour, and, and uh, I, I knew you were all coming, and uh, what was going on with you guys then, and what were you looking for? During that period, we had just uh, transitioned from uh, the hotel where we started from to the middle school, uh, and then we finally signed the lease on our building, but it was not ready yet, so in due to permits and uh, building stuff, if you will, uh, we had to have a place to uh, stay, if you will, uh, a resting place until our building was done. So that's how we end up uh, coming across uh, Pastor Mitch uh, Watney of the Good Samaritan. And uh, that's how our relationship began. And it was a true blessing for one year. Uh, they, they took us in, and we truly are thankful, truly. You weren't looking for a year. You were looking for a month. You said... Three months at the max. <laughs> at the max. I remember yeah. that. And I remember just thinking that we at Good Sam, we had been learning how important reaching out to your building users were for um, finding partners. Uh, and not all of our building users turn into be real partners, but it's a great way to learn about people. And, and so that was why I was even interested. Yes. Uh, and then you guys came in, you brought your armor bearer, and I went, uh-oh, what's this? And, and you were talking about your first lady. I went, okay, I know nothing about this community. And how, what were you guys thinking? That was pretty much the most, uh, uh, for some, it's a culture shock, if you will. Uh, for com sure. Coming from the background that we come from, the, uh, uh, the traditions and different things, that we have armor bearers, first ladies. Uh, we have different things of that culture. Yeah. Uh, and then when we came over, we saw things uh, from a different perspective. Uh, we saw things done in a different way and things that we were doing were completely different. But the good thing is that we, we, we were able to adapt and adjust to each other's culture uh, to make our relationship uh, uh, work and become even better. That way, you guys learned what we did. We learned what you guys did. And, it, and from there, it, it started a great relationship. But it didn't just happen. I mean, we started like... I don't know how it was for your folks, but my folks were like, this group's using our building and we have to get out of the way. And, and we see them in the hallways and, and they use our stuff. And, you know, we had to go through all of that. But, um, but there was this other spirit of, of um, your people brought a sense of we feel blessed to be here yes. and we think God is in that. Yes. And it translated into smiles in the yes. halls and thank you for having us here and not not a and it was never a beholding thank you. It. it was always um look how gracious God is. I can see God working in in you. Yes. And and my people began to recognize that and and it it opened them. Yes. It was it was our proximity. We were around each other weekly we were leaving and you were coming and the ships were coming and going and and in those moments god yes. was god was working i remember you guys were come for additional use yes. of the building you had weddings you had <laughs> baptisms outside of worship you had uh women's events and youth yes. events and youth it's events. like holy cow these guys are on fire <laughs> I think the most uh, exciting part was I watched from the beginning, it was uh, two groups uh, coming together slowly, but surely the relationship started to build. From day one to the last day, it was like night and day. It was like in the beginning, uh, okay, is this gonna be just a building usage? Though It went from being a building usage to a building relationship. And, I, and the building was simply the common denominator that brought us all 
to, together. And that's what I love the most is that week after week, I saw uh, the hallways as we passed each other, uh, they, the hallways slowed down to the point where when we were passing, they now were talking. No, and, that's right. And, and then that is how week after week, it went from uh, just from in, in, in the beginning going by each other to spending time with each other. And now, and then, and it was so amazing just to watch how God did things in his time. It was simply amazing. Do you remember, remember Kylie? Yes. How, how did that happen? That, that was amazing. We had an event where we uh, would sit down and we went over uh, cultures, if you will. We went over evangelism, went over different items that were uh, the Good Samaritan Saints uh, sat down with our saints and they asked us questions on how we did things. We asked questions on how they did things. And from that, uh, Kylie came to me uh, and she was so excited. Uh, and uh, it, it was so amazing because she, she's a young, around the age. She was of, in high school. High she school, was, high school, wow. Yeah. Uh, and she said, Pastor Barbara, what do you think if we actually had a service together? I'm like, wow. I said, I think that's awesome. And said, you were open to that. That uh, was like, wow. And Our relationship had come so far where we realized that we were brothers and sisters. And it wasn't about our race or anything else. It was simply about us uh, being the children of the Most High God. So, well, we hadn't really planned to do anything like that. And somehow she had the idea and you caught it and I was right there with you. And then we started coming to your, some of us yes. came to your service and, and your folks were coming to yes. ours. And what was happening in that interchange? That and was, I think personally, that was dynamic. We were blessed to be able to come to your nine o'clock service uh, and watch the atmosphere, watch uh how you operated, watch how you preached, watch how you did communion. We watched everything, and it was simply amazing. And in return, it was so awesome to, to uh, during our praise and worship service, I think we started at 11, I think then, uh, to look, I looked in the back, and I began to see uh, your saints start to fill the back rows. Yeah. I, I that, <laughs> that was, was us. So, <laughs> We're good Lutherans. I, yeah. We worship in the back. <laughs> I thought that was so awesome because <laughs> we began to, learn e how each other worship the Lord. Yeah. And it was so amazing how to see, to, to see us uh, not just uh, break bread together, but, but just come together in unity uh, in a manner uh, such as that. I thought that was awesome. It wasn't too long, and uh, I came to you with the idea that maybe you could bring a message in, in our worship to my community. Yes. Uh, you said yes. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, well, when the invitation came, I was first honored. I was honored at the fact that, that you thought enough of me to, uh, to be able to break the word of God uh, to your saints. And I, and I thank you again. And through that, um, I was sharing a while back uh, with you how uh, it opened up my perspective of even uh, teaching and preaching because I realized many times uh, we preach and teach according to our uh, demographic, if you will, and now I was preaching to a wider range uh, uh, of a culture, uh, races, and uh, personalities. You and had so, to stretch yourself so to I come to, and do that. I had to fix a meal that was not my normal meal. <laughs> I had to fix a meal that would feed the people I normally feed, but also uh, a different flock, if you will. And so it, it stretched my mind. So I went because I simply, I believe, if you go to uh, China. They're not just going to eat American food. No. You have to fix something that everybody can relate to. Yeah. And it, it was such a blessing uh, to be able to come uh, and, and share the word. And we had a dynamic service. Well, dynamic. and you did that. you Because I'd seen you preach in your own environment. And so when I, I heard you up there, I knew you were being yourself. Yes. But I also knew that you were kind of adjusting and, yes. and, and translating into our environment. But... But you did more than just give us what we normally have. You, you, you really brought us together. You, you had my folks standing, holding hands, raising their hands Amen. together at the end. Did we say the Lord's Prayer or something at yes. the end? And we were praising and singing. And my, my young people were like, okay, this is the experience of the kingdom of God that yes. I've been looking for. Wow. Uh, I didn't know I'd fight it here in my own yeah. place. <laughs> Amen. Um, what a gift and you have been. I think that was so awesome at the very fact that we came together uh, in unity. Uh, you know, as you share, our congregation is uh, more predominantly African-Americans and yours is predominantly Caucasian. Uh, but to see everyone come together is one. I think the most, uh, looking back at that service, I see how 
I looked out in the congregation and I didn't see one side here and one side there. I saw the intermingling. Yeah. And, and that was so amazing. And when at the end of the service, when we grabbed hands and we lifted hands up all, all over that place, it was, it was a, a sign of worship, a sign of beauty. Uh, and I, and I, I truly be, believe that the Lord was pleased. He truly was pleased. And how that can happen so Lutherans could feel safe was like the miracle of the Spirit for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, since, since those days, um, I have really come to appreciate your uh, friendship. Um, back then, we were, were, were we, we were having lunch every yes. month, weren't every we? Month. How, did, how did we get, how that, did that start? That, I think, it, it shows, uh, it's twofold. Number one, uh, it, it blessed me uh, for us to sit down once a month and for me to have another pastor uh, that, 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 um, uh, it's in my fave five now, if you will, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but to be able to break bread with your IHOP, Golden Corral. Yeah, wherever and we would go. Sometimes we didn't talk ministry. We just talked life. Mm. Uh, I talked about my kids. You talked about your kids and wife. We had a great time. But as well, it showed our people uh, uh, that uh, uh, how to do it, if you will, uh, that, that it's good to sit down and fellowship, yeah. uh, you know, because many times we meet. Uh, on Sunday mornings, which is great, we came together. But then our relationship went outside the walls and in, in, into our community, into simply a restaurant, just a fellowship. And it was, it was awesome. Um, there are some lasting effects of those times in, in, in my world. Um, one of them is when I'm out in our community and I'm out uh, for dinner or I'm out at a theater event, uh, invariably, somebody from Dominion comes and says, Pastor Mitch, Pastor Mitch. And they, and, and they come looking with bright eyes in that Pentecostal hello, and I know they're from Dominion. <laughs> and I, and I, um, I'm not embarrassed. I am humbled wow. and honored that, uh, I don't know, that your people have such joy I, they're expressing it to me, but it, it sounds, what I hear is they're telling me about that time and that place when God walked yes. together with yes. us. Yes. Um, I think many times when we do what we're supposed to do, uh, we simply don't know the power that it really, uh, uh, the power that's in it. You simply, to you, you were extending your building out, but to us, you were extending a lifeline. And now because you extended a lifeline to us, a place for us to lie our head for a year, now when we see you, we see someone that, that God put in our life for a purpose. So now uh, you're not just uh, Pastor Mitch Watney, you're our friend. Mm. So when we see you in the community, you're not just another pastor, you're our friend because you, you gave us your hand in, in fellowship to say it's more than just a building, you are a blessing to us. One of the other um, lasting ongoing effects now is that when we, when I go to community um, discussions on race yes. and justice, uh, on how our civil authorities treat uh, the community and the issues there, um, I see you there. Yes. And we, we speak uh, independently yes. about our own experience. But we come together talking about how to be a bridge. Yes, yes. How to bridge communities that are very separate. Yes. Um, and because, I don't know, because, but when I see you, I see a brother whom I have a lot in common with, whom yes. I love, who knows a lot about life that I don't see. So I listen hard and I bring my heart to it. And, and, um, so that's changed me in those, in those public settings as now, well. I, I think us coming together, speaking on those subjects are so key uh, because being pastors, we have influence uh, and there's people that follow us. And, and I believe us coming, uh, breaking bread and sharing thoughts uh, on the perspective of, of why this one's responding this way or why this one's doing this, it helps us go back to bring peace to the sides that, that, that uh, may be divided to bring them together. And I believe us coming together is an example of, of us gaining knowledge, breaking bread and different things uh, to go back and show the community, if you will, that, that, that it can take place, it can happen. And we still can stand in that yes. unity in our yes. community and, and we still do. Um, I know my, my people still come when they, uh, when they have... Um, 
things they're excited about doing and they want to know, does Pastor Barber, could Pastor Barber come or yes. could we have his interaction about yes. this? And so uh, we continue to hold you in, in great esteem and give thanks Amen. to God for that. It's an honor. It's an honor. Well, Pastor, thank you for your time and it's your conversation. Pleasure. And I look thank forward you. to see what God will do with us. Awesome. Amen. All right.